Hi, I'm Sam. Have you ever considered if animals can be gay? Now, at face value, homosexuality doesn't seem like something that would fit in with most evolutionary theories, but as is often the case, that doesn't seem to matter in the natural world. In fact, if we're going by recorded same-sex encounters, it's been measured in hundreds if not thousands of species, from parasitic worms to bottlenose dolphins. Bonobos are well known as the real kings of the swingers, using sex for anything from saying hello to creating alliances around the dinner table. Males will meet with males, females with females, even the youngsters get involved, and about 50% of these copulations are homosexual. In fact, recent research has found that females will have sex with higher ranking females to climb the social ladder. And not only that, they'll shout about their conquest when in earshot of the others. Thanks to a rather wide-ranging enthusiasm for courtship with just about any partner, including between fertile males and females that will then produce offspring that also have this behaviour, it continues down the evolutionary path quite nicely. However, giraffes make a surprising entrance to the arena of more consistent male-on-male -male encounters. In fact, one study that clocked over 3,000 hours following giraffes found that of 18 mounting events, 17 were male-on-male. -male. That's 94%! And yes, it got a little more X-rated than just mounting. However, in a species where the female urinates into the male's mouth to indicate her fertility during something known as the Flamen response, perhaps we can't blame the blokes. And it's not just the gents having all the fun. In fact, in several varieties of whiptail lizard, they've given up on males altogether. They form lesbian societies able to reproduce without the need for males at all. This is called parthenogenesis and creates a generation of clones. However, by some weird evolutionary hang-on, the females still need to mount each other for successful reproduction. The female on top is usually earlier on in her ovarian cycle, and she stimulates the cloaca of the female below who is reproductively active, and then she's ready to lay eggs. Now, clones typically don't do well in response to environmental change, with even a small difference like a loss in a particular prey species or a change in temperature able to polish off a whole population. However, these whiptail lizards have twice the normal set of chromosomes, giving them a lot of genetic diversity, and they appear to have originally evolved in a very extreme and changing habitat, so their offspring are already prepared for whatever life throws at them. Now, lice and albatrosses have become iconic symbols of loyalty, pairing up for life. But what was only recently discovered is that almost a third of these couples were gay. A study in Hawaii found an incredible 31% of breeding pairs were in fact unrelated females. Presumably one of those females mated with a male, but then returned to her female partner to raise a chick. There are theories of kinship behind raising someone else's chick. For example, I'd be likely to help raise a nephew or niece because they contain a lot of my genes and I want to secure my genetic legacy, even if I wasn't one of the parents. But with these lesbian parents, only one of the mothers is related to the chick suggesting the other female is simply committed to the pairing. So there you have it. There are loads of examples of same-sex relationships in nature and loads of evolutionary strategies to make sure they stick around. If you can think of any more, let us know in the comments below. Remember to like and click here to subscribe for more Wonders of the Animal Kingdom on Earth Unplugged. Make no mistake, such passionate liaisons are not ordinary acts of prostitution.